And it looks like we are streaming now, so that's good. So you guys, uh, we've got Cubase open here. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be working today on a song. Like oh, look so at that. Good. I forgot to so mute myself. Guys, uh, we've got Cubase open here. Um, there we go. That's fixed. Still amateur hour, but we're getting better. Uh, so uh, I will be streaming, uh, creating a song called 8-Grit. Uh, I have listened to a tiny bit of it. Um, again, all I've really got to go on so far today is uh, some MIDI uh, tempo and Shale's vocals. So let's, let's go ahead and create a new project. I could do this by importing the MIDI uh, by going here. But what I would prefer to do is create the new project first. Uh, so I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to be 24-bit, 44.1 is what we usually work in. Uh, notice I've got a couple of different templates set up. Uh, so we'll continue here. And we will we will not create it inside this trash folder here. Uh, there's some other things. We'll go to grammar and create a new folder. And we will call it 8-grit. And that's where we'll set up our project. I'm going to try today and probably go a little quicker than I have on some of the previous videos. Uh, first thing we're going to do <coughs> is save this project. Um, it automatically puts it in the right folder. You can, in Cubase, name things whatever you want, uh, but I'm going to name it the same as the folder. I just try to keep that consistent. Uh, later on, if I save it to do some other things, then I will save the project with a different name like when I do my stem export uh, okay let's pull this up and da, da, da. there we go okay so let's import this MIDI data so now notice now it's giving us do you want to create a new project I'm gonna say no uh, because what I wanted is I want to have these tracks set up ahead of time uh, just for whenever I do my audio. Uh, notice I've also got this Roomworks um, reverb and then a mono delay set up. Uh, those are my two most common go-to effects, so I put them in the default uh, project whenever I create it. That way I don't have to set up a reverb later. It's already there and I can just adjust the reverb instead of having to waste time loading new plugins. They're just there ready to go. Uh, okay, so I'm going to say no. Uh, now I need to go find it. Uh, I'm going to do that over on the other screen because you guys don't need to look at my file system. It looks like it's this folder here. And we have 140 beats per minute MIDI. Uh, and in fact, let's just import that right there. Let's see if it grabs the tempo from the MIDI file. It should. It's been a while since I did it this way. Okay, so... And it did. It grabbed it. It put it on the tempo track, and you can see we're at 140. You can also see my my microphone coming in. Um, let's move this over here. We don't need that right now. Oh, Shale. Oh, Shale. I know he's watching the stream right now. Shale, is everything on the keys track? The demo that he gave me had some things. I feel like he exported to MIDI format zero again which is going to make for an interesting an interesting uh bit of work let's hear this let's solo it and notice it's uh cubase has loaded up a, a general midi synth for us to use uh, i feel like this is going to be a cacophony let's see what we get seems slow all right let's see what we get here so that in my head 
It's not what I was expecting from the brief listen I gave to the... I didn't listen to the entire thing yet. Okay, let's, uh, let's add an audio track, a stereo one. Stick that there. We'll just drag this MP3 on there. Now we have track notes, track notes. Key of E major except for the bridge, which is not that. And I have some wrong no notes in the demo mix there because I didn't correctly automate my pitch correction. That's okay. Uh, oh, I didn't even read that. I was going to say that's okay. It won't be like that in the finished thing. For the final chorus, make sure you use the part of take two with your home game, hometown game stop. Um, okay. For the rest of the track, use whichever sounds best. All other things equal. I think generally I prefer take one. Feel free to disregard the MIDI drums. I'm going to have to, Shale, because you exported to format zero again. Um, they're there to give you a sense of the song's rhythmic pulse as I imagine it. Um, let's see here. Okay, so his vocal takes. Uh, let's see if... Let's see what we get here. Well, that's hot and clipping. Let's uh, let's fix that real quick. We'll just drag that down so it's not doing that. Okay. And we have. Okay. Now let's zoom in on that guy here. And it looks like that has nothing to do with what I've got in the MIDI here. Let's see. Let's look at the lengths and see where they're supposed to fall. So it looks like this is supposed to happen a little later, probably around in here. Um, maybe. Uh, I don't know. These appear to be two different songs. Maybe not. Maybe not. Okay. What do we got here? Now it looks like the keys maybe comes in here on this measure. Now the MIDI is all quantized or at least uh, even if you didn't quantize internally. Uh, what you see in all this stuff, the clips are at least start on directly on a measure. Uh, the MP3 does not. Uh, but like if you're ever collaborating with people, this is a good way to start a, a thing you send them is with something very clear and easy to count like this. Cause I can real easily just take this and just shift it over. Um, if it were a wave file, it wouldn't have that extra data, but as we've discussed before, MP3s always have that little bit of extra data at the beginning right here. Um, and it's not a predictable amount. It, it can be different depending on how big the, the, the ID3 tag or any other header information can be. Uh, so let's zoom in real good. Boy, that, look at that right there is where I think that triggers. So we'll start there. Um, now this, because I, he, he did set it at 140. Let's see. I, I'm pretty sure that's going to lock right in. Two, three. Yeah. Well, that's the, the piano, of course. Okay. So now these are, these are locking in together. Uh, so this MIDI, it doesn't seem like it's got the drum data in it. I didn't see when I opened this up, I didn't see a lot of CD action. Um, by which I mean, I didn't see this. Which is what happens when your MIDI drums end up on a piano track. So this could just be the keys, um, which would be fine because I'll just redo the other instruments. Uh, da, da, da. Now the last project we, we did like this uh, was different because it was all uh, little audio loops. Um, in this case, what it looks like I've got is just a keyboard instrument, which it's assigned to piano, but we're going to, we're going to change that. Um, when I imported, 
let's see. When I imported the, the MIDI file, uh, it automatically set up this Halion SE um, or SSE, HSSE. It says it right there. Um, it automatically sets that up and it assigns MIDI channels to everything. But uh, we will load some different synths. So it looks like maybe that is meant to start. Let's turn our quantize back on right here. So we have this little drum intro. Let's kill that metronome. Let's see if this all lines up. Now what we can do is I can send that to the left. I can send this to the right and confirm things. Okay, so it looks like we have got a synth here, and this one I will be doing some arranging. Um, so this will be vastly different to the process that we went through with Irma. Uh, -da. Let me see if Shale can export me a MIDI track of his other instruments, because it sounds like there was a bass and some other things going on there at a minimum. Um, hear it clipping a lot demos you know the, the clips it doesn't matter um that's why we turned it down but let me see if we can get some midi with the other instruments because i'd like to hear them but you know we'll just we'll work with what we've got for now so let's save it everything is lined up i think if i take so let's because we don't really need four full measures of lead in let's line that up and then we'll drag these guys back and they go there so now we start uh, we should have one measure of lead in <laughs> now we'll drag him there okay now we can and that back okay time to get to actually working on this thing so this keys he's got this nice bubbly thing going on Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add an instrument track. And we have uh, immediately a decision to make. Uh, what instrument am I going to use? I think uh, I just got this velvet. Uh, so I'm going to play with it because I just got it. But I feel like we're going to end up with expand. Um, I just want to hear this velvet. Add track. Um Okay, so this thing uh, was on sale last week for 90% off, uh, and I wasn't going to pass that up. So let's see, we need to solo it. I may need to adjust my latency, that feels a little bit slow. Um, could get me onto the velvet track. So it's, this has uh, some roads. Which, uh, Rhodes is one of my favorite things ever. Uh, that's just our, our default sound. What do we got here? Um, Mark 1 Evolving. So now what I'm going to do is take this MIDI and just drag it down to this track. And let's hear what... Well, that's awful, so we won't use that at all. Uh, cut through chords, metal tine, swirly phase. I feel like I'm going to want something soft FM, maybe. Let's load uh, another one. Let's take it a second to load, I've noticed. It's not super fast. Pull up 
Well, that's a great sound. Okay, so a couple things are gonna need to happen. Uh, I'm gonna leave that track. Uh, I'm not gonna use it for this, but I'm gonna leave it because I am gonna use that in here. Uh, so we're gonna add an instrument track and we'll go ahead and get this expand synth. Expand synth is a really neat little resource. Um, I believe it comes free with Pro Tools. You can find it, uh, I got it uh, with my, my MIDI controller. I got an Alesis MIDI controller and it came with it. Uh, and I've seen it go every once in a while to put it out for free. Um, really cool synth. Uh, it has four separate parts. What we're going to do right now is we're going to solo it so that we can hear it. I don't really need to solo anything. I just need to, I need to mute the, the DAW track up there. There we go. How did, oh. I accidentally there we go let's put that up there out of the way uh, so now when we play through this let's drag that up to the expand synth so what I'm gonna do with this this is a, a key part of the song um, and I think I would like to hear it uh, my first thing is going to be an electric piano but we're gonna add some other things the CP 80 might be good let's see what we get that's great oh let's turn turn the reverb on there Oh, that's lovely. Let me check OBS here and make sure I'm not blowing the levels out too bad. And eh, that's good. Okay. Okay, so now we have the CP80 basic sound. Uh, that's our bass that we're going to go with. But I want it to move a little bit and be dynamic. So we're going to go... And look here at these action pads and we're gonna add let's try accented gator sounds like it might be what I'm looking for I like some gators now on its own that's not very useful So I'm not really sure what's going on with this particular patch, how to change. I'm not loving that. Let's see what we got here. Oh, airy pulsator. Sounds good. <laughs> How about no? Um, Now that we can work with. That's a that's very very '90s Roland. Um, so what I'm going to do is take that and I'm going to nudge it up an octave. Uh, da -da. No, really, come back down to twelve. There we go. Really, come on. You should just stick to 12, please. Okay, so that's going to bump that. It was the wrong one. Oh, come on.
Maybe even 24. No. Not even, not even kind of good. Sean, what are you doing? Um, it needs to be like a square wave or something. Let's do polysense. Playing with sounds is always fun, but it would be nice if I uh, had just had this whole thing memorized. That'd be cool. For now, we're just gonna leave it with the uh, we're gonna leave it with the EP because another thing needs to happen here right now, which is that we need a groove. Let's move that. There we go. Okay, so let's add our groove agent track. Now, Groove Agent is just the built-in drum sequencer. It's nothing super fancy. Um, I think right now, let's do Florida Kit because reasons. That'll work. Uh, okay, so what Shale had done on his drums, so in Kia was uh, this little uh, gallop groove. Um, I could just come up here and grab it. Uh, but, you know, it's not going to be that hard to just recreate it. Um, so I'm going to recreate it, and then I'm going to change the sounds to be more appealing. Uh, let's take this, and we'll just make a little four-bar loop there. Uh, not every DAW is the same, but in Cubase, you have to actually create an event there like that before you can edit it. Uh, you could just record. Uh, that works too, but... For our purposes, we'll just do this. Now I'm going to step record here, uh, and I'm going to do quarter notes. And I'm just going to do this. Looks like I created an eight bar loop. There we go. I forgot to mute that. Okay, so let's give us some. There we go. That's good enough. And here we're just going to go tick, tick, a tick, tick, a tick, tick, a tick. Uh, so up here, we're going to do. And I think we're going to take that and we'll just grab that and stick it here some more times. How did you get there? Now we only need half of those. that again bring this guy here uh, actually uh, no we want thought 
that'll work. Uh, we're going to be changing sounds, but that's our... All right, turn off. Turn off step record, Sean. Um, those are... Those are, those are awful. Um, definitely not going to stick with this kit. Uh, I'm going to stick those on the B. on the low one too. Good enough. Um, okay, first one needs a crash. Crash. There's a crash. Okay. So then we just take that whole thing and we go like this. Uh, copy. Let me switch back to whole notes so that I don't paste it in on a 16th. And then we're just going to do like four of those. It looks like up here maybe we get a new section change, so we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Uh, Is that a different part of the song? Good grief! It's, it's very loud. Okay, let's go back here. That's a separate part, so we're gonna change that. Um, okay, cool. I'm gonna delete that for now, and let's get. I feel like uh, I'm gonna abandon ship a little bit here. Um, so I know that Tanner is working on an arrangement of this as well. So I think what I'm gonna do is get rid of Groove Agent One, or no, you know what? Let's stick with Groove Agent. Um, there is, there's another drum kit that I use a lot, uh, the power drum, uh, but I, I think I'm going to stick with Groove Agent here. Let's just get... Let's get a more traditional sounding drum kit here. Perhaps not. Generally, when you see something called Maple Kit, it's going to be a Yamaha. And it'll usually be really good. Not loving that. Um, So much worse. Uh, that hard rock kit dry was actually kind of working.
Okay, so we have an intro groove and then our, all right, so let's look at this next section here. So these two are a verse. Let's glue those together. That way we won't forget later that they belong together. It's not vital, but it doesn't hurt anything. Uh, okay, so here we have a new new part of the song. The phone and a laptop left my partner at the Fayetteville game stop. Life in the death throes of capitalism. Now I'm standing softly into... Yeah, this is going to be a ride section. Um, so let's go back to our step. And we want to go quarters and we'll probably hit like uh, of course uh, da, da, you have to remind Cubase that you want to start working on the section that you're working on or it will put you at the beginning of the song uh, so let's try that again So let's come back here. Um, I'm going to change that to 16th. We're going to go. too busy uh, let's let's hear it without really we're gonna do that uh, let's hear it and start that over I think what we want to do now is we want we want eighth notes here so let's do uh, Okay, I want to take half of these crashes. And put them over there. So now they alternate. And uh, let's come back here. Save. Okay. I know you. Okay, so. loving the grooves. So I'm, I'm kind of in my head, there are more instruments happening and what I'm playing is not grooving with what I want them to do. So we'll fix that. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's good to know that those bees don't do anything. days where I'm not feeling it, the grooves. That's what I want. Let's do that. <laughs> That's what we want. Okay, so I lied. This is not making me happy. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch to this drum kit. So uh, I mentioned Tanner's doing a, a mix of this as well, uh, which means that his is going to be probably more electronic because that's kind of just what he does. Uh, what I'm going to do is use this, and my mix is going to be a little more rock. Um, that's better. We don't need to listen to that whole thing. Let's come here. just copy and paste that there. Uh, I'm not going to do the whole song today, but I am going to figure out some key bits. I just don't have as quite as much time today as I did last couple so sessions. Uh, da -da -da. One second. Oh, I'm sorry. They're they're running. They'll be back. I just had a had my my oldest child delivered to the house, so um, they were confused that the other child was not at the house because his mother is out running errands with him. So that's yeah. We'll we'll go through and edit things later, uh, but I need to hear if this is another section here. Got me the green yeah, that's our next verse. So let's just copy paste. Uh, and if I know shale, there's going to be a chorus following, and then probably a bridge. Human needs is a phone and a laptop left my... 
Man, those drum pills are terrible, but they're just placeholders for now. I'll come back when I have other instruments to to inform the drummer what he should play. Uh, let's see. Stick this up here. We got our All right, call those drums. And we're going to come in with uh, an instrument track. Now, this is going to be another kind of kind of just a placeholder while I figure things out, because I'll come through and record all the guitars and live instruments in one pass. Um, Leon 1 has a, a very usable bass that we can get in here. Because I feel like the song is lacking uh, in bass. It's not heavy in weight, and it needs to be. So let's come over here. Let's go. Subcategory, musical, bass. Let's see here. Bass with bite. That will work. All right, I'm going to play the song real quick. I've got to go talk with the child who was dropped off and use the restroom real quick. So we'll be right back. Go ahead and have a listen while, while you wait. right in time okay so uh, let's see what we've got here Can we do that? Can we get away with that? I think we can get away with that. Um, okay, so <laughs> let's. I feel like I'm gonna have to start changing notes when we we get to the vocal part. Um, this first bit I'm not going to at all. We're just gonna hammer away on that that E. Uh, what I am gonna do is uh, we'll do a little trickery here. Let's, so I know I'm gonna want these eighth notes, uh, and I know I'm gonna want this E. So I'm just gonna hit this.
So now we've got all those eighth notes in there. Uh, I was using step record to put those in. Uh, where are they? Here we are. So now what I'm going to do is just grab all of these uh, and I'm going to just shorten them ever so slightly. We're going to turn off our snap. And we just, no, I don't want to move them. I want to change the length. There we go. I grabbed the wrong end of the, the little block. Okay, so now they're all cut short. They can go shorter. Da, 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 da. Okay, so we're gonna have a da, 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 we're gonna have an E and then a sound. Ow. That's as low as we get is that that B right there because I'm gonna replace this with a five string probably. But maybe I may just keep this. You never know. I may decide I like the synth. Um, Okay, so it's definitely. I think it's gonna go to G sharp there, because it's gonna be. I think he holds the E. Uh, what do we want to call it? That's E for sure. That's a four. Back to one. Back to four. Then that's one, but we wanna we wanna have the bass walk down. No, we don't wanna do first. Uh, we want don't wanna do root position there. Um, okay, so let's draw this. How long does this go? That's going to be a, a change where it goes to the 5 over whatever that is. Um, it's a nice chord change he's done there. Shale has a really good ear for poppy chord changes. Um, now this verse... I'm doing something that's a little counterintuitive with this arrangement, and we'll see if I stick with it or not. But um, I'm starting out with those pulsing eighth notes, keeping this that 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 sort of ostinato, just hammering away at you. Uh, later on, that's going to be a quarter note. It's going to cut to halftime and be bump 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 bump. Um, usually, you kind of start slow and then build, but I I think this one's going to be a start upbeat and then break down later into halftime. Okay, so let's get a step record on and turn that back and get eighth notes again. So we've got. And then when we get here, we're back to. So now it's going to do the A and the E again. And then I believe drag that out. Let's see what he's, what exactly is the piano doing there on measure 19? Looks like he's got some C sharps, uh, F sharp, and a D. So what do, what do we call that when we have a C sharp and an F sharp? We're going to call that probably an F sharp. Um, 
not seeing okay we've got a naturals here so yeah we're going to call that an f sharp minor that works come back here that makes sense the five going to the b I'm curious about something here. No? Okay. It's just the sound. Okay. Now, the first part we were. Da, 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 da. I think here I like it. Legato. I got this McDonald's gift card. That's how I feed myself now. Does he start those piano chords on an anticipation? No, he just has a weird look. What what do we got? That's that's got to be a miss key. That was it. That one does start on an anticipation. The F sharp does as well. Okay, so the one that I started on an anticipation, I think, doesn't? It does. Okay. Okay, so let's just fix that real quick. So... And then now this is an interesting thing he's done here where we didn't he has not come back to the E uh, he's come back oh that's a nice minor chord there so we've got the A. What chord are you playing there, Shale? Measure 23. Back to E. That's an A minor, okay. So I think what we're going to do there, because we've got the A, um, what we might, I don't want to put the E, let's, let's see, because it sounds like the bass player is just playing the wrong chord if he plays the E under this. Yeah, um, if we have, yeah, then we get a little, um, So, mm -mm. that's what we'll do. I wanted to descend. Um, I wanted to have a, uh, and we may do that in an upper voice, but I think the lower, the bass is going to go up. Uh, yeah, let's try that. So we're going to go from the A on the A chord, and then the, the E chord we're going to stick in second inversion. Now the A minor we're going to stick in first inversion, we're going to get that C natural on the bottom because that's the most interesting note in the chord. Those are not anticipations. <laughs> Fix that real quick because it sounds funky. I'm not loving the B on the E chord. Let's 
These may have to happen in a different instance. we on here. Okay, and that's the F sharp to B. Uh, that gives us our two five change. Um, it's an interesting mix of four fives and two fives. Let's come back here. We want two more A's. Uh, then from there we go to the E again. And I think here might be a good... Okay, so this this A. I think let's let's hold off on that. Uh, this is one of those things where we we aren't going to play the same thing every chorus. And that needs to walk. Kind of a thin lizzy kind of type of an idea, maybe. Oh, this okay, so this needs to be here. C natural. Did it too late. And I think Let's fatten that up a little bit. Let's okay, so we get this. Let's, yeah, let's move. Because that's going to be our F sharp, yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah, then we can. Come up to this B here, and we can. No. I almost want to change his chord here. Why do I hear a bass note there? I haven't. What? Where's that coming from? Where 
Where are you, bass note? Okay, it's in his original. So that's just going to be a B. Um, I thought I might do a, a descending sort of thing there, but I don't. I don't think it works. Download the low, low B. We'll just stick with. that let's uh yeah And then we want to, yeah, I want to change that. that. If we were looping back, this would be a nice little turnaround. It's a, it's a Bobby McGee chord change, except it doesn't go to Bobby McGee. Uh, What changes? What changes there? We, we change and we've got an A9 here, it looks like. What's the important? The G sharp? The D. The D is the important because it's an E7 going to B. Okay, so what we're, we're modulating to A. So what we're doing is we're taking the one chord. Um, the one chord would be our E, which sounds like this. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's change instruments here. So the one chord is our E, where we get this. Why? Why? Come back to me. Um, oh, it's because I'm down two octaves. So that's our one chord, and we've been going from one to four. And that gives us our, our hallelujah. And then... That's sus. Um... So what we're doing is we're, we're wanting to change to A. And if we're just playing an E here, and we go to an A, it just continues to, or sorry, if we just play an E here, and then go to an A. But if we do this, now that one chord with the D natural pulls us and it changes it from being the one chord in E to the five chord in A, which gets us there. Um, it's a really, really nice thing to be to, to do when you want to modulate to a closely related key. So what we'll do with this is we're gonna right here. I've got this. 
right there is going to be it's going to alternate from D to E. So yeah, let's keep these as E's and we'll just daku daku. Maybe hit the. I think I like this. So let's get this chorus programmed in here. It's going to go from here to way over to this other thing. 16 bars there. Okay. Now here, yeah, we're gonna keep up with the eighth notes. The groove will change on the next one. Uh, when we get to the next verse, we'll change it. And then we'll, the chorus will also have a different groove. Interesting. So, so we got two bars of A. Do 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 do. Really, Cubase. This is one of the most annoying things you'll deal with with Cubase. Is why is why is the the step record thing not following me? Why does it go back to measure zero? So we've got F sharp going to B. Alright, let's look at that because my ears are apparently broken today. Let's look at it. That appears to be an E add nine. Okay. It's got a B in the bass here. Then, yeah, it's just E going to E7 again. Uh, why does it sound so funny? Capitalism. Life in the death row. 
two here and then get these up to B. It's a little bit hokey, but... First part's the same. Okay, so when we get here. So here we're going to change from the eighth notes. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to I'm just going to grab that first bit and paste it here. And I kind of wonder. Um, while we're looking at this bass, let's. rock out bass. <clears throat> yeah, I think that I may have actually found the, uh, I may have found the drum kit that I was looking for earlier too. <laughs> I think it's I think it's a a Haley on one drum kit. Oh, those notes are too low for it. Okay, let's come back to the bass. That's what I'm looking for. I want it picked. <clears throat> In just a hunt. I pasted that whole thing one sixteenth or one eighth note off. Um, 
get back over there. Okay, so when we get here, I think what we want to do is lose some of these notes. Um, Yeah. There's that, that's got to be his uh, missed note again. Where is it? Ooh, who are you, F natural? G natural. got some things Kind of... Yeah, that's, that's a better counterpoint. Shale, what were you doing? Oh, no, no, that's good. That's okay. That's changing to the A minor. F sharp, please. There we go. I think that's what he was supposed to have there. It is now. Uh, okay, so. So this groove we've been doing, this dot, dot.
back to here, yeah. Andrew Lloyd Webber kind of sounding chord change. Wouldn't that? should be short. And then we don't need this walk down. It's too much. I want Is that other? And then here we don't we don't need this. Uh, okay, and he's changed that part. So we want to we want to fix our rhythm because this was doing a specific serving a specific purpose and we got to fix that miss note in 56 and let's see here measure 56 what do you got it's the G natural um, back to base. And just rock on that because we've done a lot of busy stuff so we want to set up uh, and take it easy right here before that big break right there.
Oh no. And all I'm doing here is just doing some little detailing to make these parts kind of fit with each other. Okay, and then we gotta fix that in the bass line because the chords do not do the same weird rhythm. Just uh, listen to that real quick. Those are sixteenths. Here's our bridge. Oh no, that's a You may notice that there is some serious auto-tune going on on the vocals. Um, a lot of times when we're just trying to crank out a demo, there's there's not a lot of effort put forth into spending loads and loads of time on the vocals because he's going to come back and redo them almost every time. Um, I may just use these in the track notes. He had some suggestions, but um, the ones that are in the demo may, may be completely different from the, the actual vocals that he sent me. Uh, I haven't looked at them yet, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if they're not not the same takes. Because um, with the demo, he's just trying to crank out the song so that we can get working on it. Oh, that's new. That's the bridge. Uh, and so I think I'm going to come off of this. Uh, this MT Power Drum Kit is a fantastic sounding kit. Um, um, just really, really... really like it uh, look this thing up it also <laughs> so there's this and a lot of drum kits will come with a set of grooves um, as you notice I'm just programming some real simple grooves and I'm not doing anything super fancy but with this uh, if you look let's say we go to this eighth closed hi-hat so we're four four grooves 60 to 150 beats per minute what happens if I click this guy here I hit play now Here's the interesting thing that you see, okay, is we've got this whole list. So this is just eighth note closed hi-hats. Uh, we've got this list of grooves here. And then we have this list of fills. And what you, it's easy to, to miss at first is that each one of these has a whole other list of those fills. Uh, so each one of these fills takes the groove here and then escalates it. 
So let's say we have this, uh, this one right here and we drag it and we have our groove and then we drag a fill. And then let's say we come over to this one and we drag our groove down. We got three bars of that and then we'll grab a fill. Um, when we play this, nice simple groove. Now this one's gonna take this groove and escalate. So anyway, and then you can take this and just drag this whole thing onto a MIDI track and it'll, uh, let me grab one on, let's drag it onto there. So you can see that now what it's done is it took those grooves that I was working with and it just put them in there uh, so that you can apply them to either the same drum kit or if you want to use their grooves on a different drum kit, you can. Um, those are really handy for, for getting like a quick demo cranked out. Um, without having to expend a lot of effort on the grooves. The downside of them is they're not the groove uh, of the song necessarily. So you have to go through and say, okay, am I going to use their groove and then adjust to that? Or am I going to take their groove and adjust it to the song? Or am I going to hope I get lucky and find the perfect groove in this collection? Um, it's pretty decent. There's not a bad chance that you'll find the, the, the groove that you need because they've got a lot in there. Um, but anyway, let's take a look at this drum set. And what I was thinking is this wasn't what I actually had in my head. Um, I do like this kit, but I think what I want is to come back to this Halion Sonic SE discard. Uh, no, I don't want Sonic SE. Never mind. Sonic SE is the big one. I want the little one. Um, so let's change this. Oh, where is it? Piano one, piano one, Halion one. That's the one I want. This is the the old Cubase synth. Uh, they replaced it, uh, but it does have some drum kits here, and I think this is the one I want. Is maybe this SR Live? Maybe the Smackle? There's this Alta kit is really nice as well. That's a great kit, but it's not the right one. That's a nice live kick, but I don't like the snare. And you can't mix and match these, unfortunately. Definitely not. This one's a little more live. Um, let's see how that sounds with my other instruments. Don't love the hi hats. need a fill in that spot. What's the difference between this? Q. 
curious. I'm using D for my snare. E is not a better snare. Oh, that snare's good. That's the right kit for this song. Um, I may do some adjusting to get the levels right between the, the drums. And I may I may grab the kick from a different kit. Uh, it's not illegal. You can take you can cut that kick drum right out, put it on another track on a different on a different kit. Um, about out of time here for today um, I think I'm just gonna yeah I'm gonna call it a day here um, we've got the first bits uh, things went a little slower than I would expect uh, just figuring stuff out uh, playing around with sounds um, but we've got most of the ar arrangement for the bass and then I'll come in and start filling in other instruments and it'll all probably fall in place pretty quick uh, so that's all we're going to do for now. Uh, I am Ail Sean from the Grammar Club, and I'll see you later.